Hello. In terms of the sharing of ideas and information, there have been four great cultural revolutions in human history. The invention of writing, the widespread development of movable type printing, the development of film, radio and television, and the development of the Internet. In this video I want to talk a little bit about the second of these, specifically the development of printing in 15th century Europe and the tremendous consequences that this had. As you know, printing first originated in China by at least as early as the 3rd century, but this was in the form of block printing, xylography, with the image to be copied being cut into a block of wood. To do this, the Chinese had developed a clear and durable ink, the so-called India ink, made from lamp black, derived from burning oils or wood, and compounded into a stick. Further developments occurred from the time of the Tang Dynasty onwards, with the sacred texts of Buddhism and later other philosophies and religions being printed. Subsequent and related developments occurred in both Japan and Korea. Important though these developments were, they did not have the revolutionary impact which printing later came to have in Europe. They were performed within a traditionalist mode of thinking to preserve sacred texts and, in the case of the Buddhist scriptures, to attain and effectively mass-produce merit rather than diffuse knowledge as such. Printing appears to have developed independently in the West. In Europe, however, the significant aspect in the development of printing was typography, that is, printing from movable type made from metal rather than xylography. Typography, of course, is a method more easily utilized with an alphabetic rather than an ideographic written language. The basic technique was first developed in the mid-15th century by Johann Gutenberg, a goldsmith in Mainz in the Rhineland. It was relatively simple but extremely effective. Individual metal letter types, made from an amalgam of lead, tin and antimony, were set into a frame which was then inked and squeezed against a single sheet of paper in a press adapted from those used for pressing cheese or grapes. The first major work produced was the famous Gutenberg Bible from some time around 1450, but this was undoubtedly preceded by simpler items such as single-sheet proclamations and the like. Gutenberg himself was not a successful businessman, going bankrupt in 1458, but other craftsmen quickly took up the trade, turning mines into the first European printing centre. Diffusion of the new craft to other parts of Europe soon followed, particularly after the sack of mines in 1462 by troops of the local archbishop, which caused many printers to migrate elsewhere. Of particular importance was the establishment of printing in Venice in 1469, the city subsequently becoming the major printing centre for the whole continent. The total number of towns in which printing had been established mounted rapidly, particularly from the 1470s onwards, such that by 1499 printers had set up shop in some 251 centres across Europe. By 1500 there were some 150 presses in Venice alone, and these had produced more than 4,000 editions, approximately one-seventh of all the works that had then been printed in Europe. The total number of printed books then in circulation is likely to have been at least 10 million volumes. Significantly, printing did not spread widely outside of Europe and its overseas colonies, a fact of crucial importance in tracing the subsequent struggle between traditional and innovative ideas worldwide. With the rapid diffusion of printing across Western Europe within a few years, large numbers of relatively cheap books and other materials were being produced. The works covered a wide range of subjects, religion, political ideas and practice, technology, science, geography, exploration, including atlases, current events and the occult. This had a number of major impacts. The ready availability of reading materials, 
first of all being held to have encouraged literacy, particularly in Protestant countries, where individual Bible reading was greatly encouraged. It also led to a wider diffusion of ideas, as an author's views could quickly be circulated throughout Europe. Again, it caused a popularization of knowledge, including the production of new sheets and the like, which could be accessed by the semi-literate and could also be read to the illiterate. It is also argued that printing promoted the development of national languages, a topic I'll talk about a little bit more in a moment. Finally, because printed texts were more readily available than manuscripts, they prompted a more critical approach to the texts themselves. Mistakes and contradictions, which might not be noticed in a manuscript, could be more easily seen and corrected. Returning to the development of national languages, prior to the development of printing, each major district in a country often had its own distinctive dialect, which was frequently more or less incomprehensible to the speakers of other dialects of the same language in different parts of the country. At the same time, the small minority of people who could read and write were generally literate in Latin, the second language of all educated Europeans, and the language of religion and law. There were already manuscript works of vernacular literature in some languages, but they were limited in number. All this changed rapidly with the spread of printing, an increasingly large number of books appearing in all the major modern European languages and the form of those languages becoming fixed, with one particular dialect becoming the national language, for example Parisian court French, London court English, official Saxon High German. Printing also had a major impact on scholarship. The introduction of printing made studying a book much easier not just in terms of access and possible ownership, but also in terms of the format and organization of the book itself. This included the establishment of standard editions of texts, clearly attributed authorship and publication details, pagination, title pages, tables of contents, chapter divisions, and indexes, all of which made use of and reference to a work considerably easier. Again, the modern italic font was developed so as both to make reading easier and so as to fit more words onto the page of the new easily portable octavo-sized editions. That's about nine times six inches in size. Lists of published books were also printed and serious thought began to be given to systems of library organization and cataloging. Specialized books and printings also became readily available. Thus, an increasing number of bilingual and multilingual dictionaries were published to help the work of translation. The first, a massive Latin-Italian dictionary in 1502. One particular area of scholarship which was greatly enhanced by the spread of printing was the study of classical, that is, Latin and Greek literature, history and philosophy with printings of all the available major works becoming commonplace, often both in the original language and in various of the European vernaculars. Again, biblical scholarship was enhanced by the appearance of printed Bibles, including polyglot editions with copious notes. Also of note were certain forms of specialized printings, including illustrated books with woodcuts, the earliest in 1471, and maps and atlases. And in 1501, music publishing was revolutionized with the appearance of the first printed musical score. This required a three-stage process, first staves, then notes, and then the text. Of enormous social and political import, printing enabled new ideas to be readily circulated amongst the reading public and disagreements between different authors to be more widely and readily known. Within Europe, printing easily fueled religious and political disputes, with the development of propaganda to promote particular causes. It also facilitated the spread of whole bodies of new ideas, notably in the Reformation and the Scientific Revolution.
The circulation of this mass of printed material posed particular problems for those who sought to control the spread of ideas. Quite clearly, printing had a potential to subvert established tradition, and whilst European leaders did not try to prevent the spread of printing, unlike leaders in the Islamic world, many tried to control it through the introduction of censorship and the compulsory licensing of printers. The most comprehensive system of control was that introduced by the Roman Catholic Church from the 1470s onwards, with threats of penalties for the printing or reading of heretical texts, the banning of the printing of unauthorized works, and the publication of an increasingly comprehensive list of banned works. National governments also began to introduce systems of licensing for publication, as well as bans on particular books, including the death penalty in some cases for the possession of particular books. Marked differences also emerged between different states, a division developing between those countries in which authors were relatively free to publish what they wanted and those in which they were not. A divide began to open up between what we might now describe as relatively liberal parts of Europe and those which were reactionary. Finally, let me note that printing was one factor in the development of all three of the major intellectual movements of early modern Europe, that is, the Renaissance, the Reformation, and the Scientific Revolution. I will talk about these separately in other videos. Thank you for listening.